So just a couple things here. We got 12 weeks till. So that means we need individually wrapped pieces of candy and we're gonna need thousands of pieces of that. We haven't, I haven't sat down and wrestled cowboy yet on how many eggs we're gonna do this year, but uh, I know we have at least 30,000 upstairs. So um, we'll, uh, We'll play with that. I got my wife and cowboy on against me here, so I want to go down and they want to go up. So <laughs> anyway, we need lots and lots and lots of candy. We'll be starting stuffing eggs probably the middle of next month. And uh, away we go. All right. Anger management. How many of you have been to anger management? How many? Keep your hands up. How many of you have been to recovery? All right. So all the rest of you on Monday nights. You, I'm inviting all of you because everybody needs anger management. If anybody's, most of angry people are the ones that didn't raise their hand. Anyway, they're combining the two classes together. So anger management recovery is, we haven't made a name for it yet, but we'll figure out something for that. But it starts at 6 o'clock, not 5.30. So come at 6 and that both classes with Ace and Mary will be together. And uh, if we out blow that room down there, we'll find another place to go, okay? What's that, Jane? So, so Miss Jane, I'm gonna throw Miss Jane under the bus. So you just make the announcement. We need ladies in anger management, and you'll be surprised to know that our anger comes from a simple little thing of taking offense, and that is easier to handle sometimes than anger. So come and join us, and you'll learn a lot, and we'll all love you. There you go. Right on. <laughs> and that's this Monday, starting at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Monday at 6 o'clock. So, how many of you know most of you ladies are the angriest of the bunch? Oh, look at that. See, there's some truthful ones out here, woman. We manage our <laughs> I love it. Last thing I got before I get myself in big trouble. Ouch. <laughs> I do love you. <laughs> so how many of you were here last week? We watched the video of Bethlehem and all that stuff. So what I'm going to ask you to do, we're not going to take up two offerings. There's these offering envelopes are in the back of the pews. If you want to give to that Bethlehem project for the generator, put your offering in one of these envelopes and just put Bethlehem on here. And that way, it will we'll differentiate from the tithes and the offering and all of the stuff that you give to Bethlehem will go straight to Pastor Curry over at First Baptist in Bethlehem, Israel. Okay? And with that, cowboy, come bail me out. <laughs> uh, all right, please join me with our set free pledge. <laughs> I am part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I'm a disciple of Jesus. I won't look back or let up. Slow down, back away, or be still. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sidewalking, cheap giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotion, or popularity. I don't have to be right, recognized, praised, regarded, or recorded. I live by faith, walk by patience. My face is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, my companions are few. My guide is reliable, my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, deterred, hired away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice or hesitate in the presence of the enemy. 
I will not give up, shut up, let up until I've stayed up, prayed up. I will give till I drop, preach to all I know, and work till he stops me. And when he comes, my banner will be clear. Amen. <laughs> Uh. Everything good, Pass? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Nothing like digging a hole. <laughs> oh, well. Amen. So, Father God, let's just bring in tonight's offering. Father God, Lord, we just thank you for this evening, Lord. We just thank you for the many blessings you provide us. Father God, we just truly sit on the premise and the idea that we are set free. Not just a facility, not just a building, but we are set free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Father God, we do celebrate that. We celebrate for what you have done for us. You gave us your son. You showed us your love. In that sacrifice. But Father God, Lord, we just truly thank you this evening. We thank you for that. We thank you for Jesus. And we thank you for being set free. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 All right. It's so awesome to be together again. Let's all stand. Let's put our hands together. Amen. Amen. One, two, three, four.
great scripture in there or what? Bl blessed are the poor. I didn't want to miss that one. Blessed are the poor in spirit who are torn apart. Blessed are the persecuted and the pure in heart. This is Jesus speaking. Blessed are the people hungry for another start. Theirs is the kingdom of God. So he's, he's speaking loud and clear tonight. Amen. Amen. Where you go, I'll go, Lord. Who you love, I'll love. Hallelujah. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. When I'll you move, move I'll move. move. I will follow you.
praise tonight. Amen. We will follow. I will follow. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we come tonight. We need you. We need you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I come and I I find my
praise you, Father. Father, we thank you, Lord, that we do need you, Father God. That, Lord, you are come to our defense, Father. Lord, through the blood of the Lamb, Father God, we cleansed and made righteous. Not in our righteousness, but your righteousness. We are clothed in your righteousness, Father. We thank you that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Lord, that you are the one who meets us and meets our needs, Father God. You're the one who goes before us. You are the great I am. Lord, you are all sufficient, Father God. Lord, that every need that we have of you already know in advance, Father. Lord, you said to call to you. And Lord, that you would answer us and show us great and mighty things that we don't even know or comprehend. Lord, as we open your word tonight, Father. Lord, prepare our hearts to receive all that you have for us. As you reveal yourself to us afresh and anew today. Lord, forgive us, creating us clean hearts, and renew that right spirit within us. And Lord, we pray tonight that you would go before everything that's said and done, and be glorified in this place, in Jesus' mighty and holy name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. So I'm going to tell you how good God is. So I got a buddy of mine <clears throat> who I've known for quite a quite a long time, and uh, he was actually raised in a in a preacher's home. And how many of you know a lot of preachers' kids go sideways? I had one go really sideways for a while until she had a face-to-face -face meeting with a windshield in her face and and. Uh, God woke her up right there. But anyway, this guy, he was always harassing me. Jesus isn't this. Jesus isn't that. And I just kept loving on him. And he ended up moving away. And uh, he actually sent me something the other day. And I just replied back, hey, good to hear from you. All that good stuff. And he says, well, I went to jail the night of 1222 because I pushed my lovely wife. I regret it and we want to patch things up. I lost my job and I can't be around her kids, so I sleep in my car and it's been extremely tough and depressing. Now here's the key. I found a church that has a recovery group that I'm attending for anger management. God will use anything. And I said, right on praying for you. He says, thanks, I need it. I found a peace and was in quotations, set free from darkness. It had me for 20 plus years. I felt it leave. So God is on a roll and doing, he can catch you anywhere he wants. You know what I mean? He is the great I am. Because we're going to be talking a little bit about I am tonight. A little review is we went through John, we went through Genesis, that Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit are what? They are one. And they were in the very beginning, and they're still rolling what? Right now. So you got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Here's the trick question. Those of you that have been around here for a while, don't answer this. Where is Jesus? Don't answer if you've been here for a while. Actually, God's sitting on the throne and Jesus is at his right hand side. Where's the Holy Spirit? In us. In us. People get, you tell people that all of a sudden they get all flustered, especially if they've been in church for a while. And, and get, but if you get in your Bible, you'll find out that's the scenario where everything is. But I want you to get Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God were in the beginning all the way through December or January 25th, 2020. And guess what? They'll be hanging out together till eternity. Amen? So he's talking about when Moses was going to Pharaoh and Moses was scared to death. He had a stuttering problem and he was afraid to go to Pharaoh. And he tells, he asked God, so who am I going to tell? Pharaoh, 
Who sent me? And God told him to tell him what? I am sent me. So with that, let's turn to John chapter 8. I love these I am statements. They're just... And if you didn't hear me last week, as you're reading through your Bible and Jesus is talking and it says, I am in there, capitalize the I am in there because the Jews, when he says I am, what did they know he was saying? I'm God. That ticked a lot of people off. And you know what? You go over to Israel and you tell people that Jesus is the I am. You're going to tick some folks off. But that's all right. So John 8, starting in verse 12, says this. Once more Jesus addressed the crowd and he said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. Then the Pharisees told him, you are testifying on your own behalf. Your testimony is not valid. Kind of sounds like the Republicans and the Democrats right going on here. Come on, you can all laugh. We can all laugh. Get in here. Jesus replied, even if I do testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid because I know where I came from and where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or where I am going. You judge according to human standards just by what you see. I do not judge anyone. But even if I do judge, my judgment is true and my decision is right. For I am not alone in making it, but I and the Father who sent me make the same judgment. Even in your own law it is written that the testimony of two persons is true, valid and admissible. I am one of the two who testifies about myself and my Father who sent me testifies about me. What is he saying? He is the light of the what? What does it say? He is the light of the world. When he came into the world, what happened? He come to take away the darkness. Now, we're not talking about the night and day darkness. We're talking about your spiritual darkness that's in you. When Jesus comes into you, and the Holy Spirit comes into you, what blows up in you? The light of Jesus Christ blows up in you. And I love how I said, the California boys say it every once in a while, Jesus crashes into your life and light blows up. Amen? Go down to verse 23. Jesus still talking. He said to them, You are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. That is why I told you that you will die, die unforgiven and condemned in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be, you will die in your sins. Go to verse 28. So Jesus said, when you lift up the Son of Man on the cross, yes, know then, without any doubt, that I am He, and that I do nothing on my own authority, but I say these things just as my Father taught me. He is the light of the world. Flip over to verse 58. Jesus replied, I assure you and must solemnly say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus concealed himself and left the temple. What is he doing to this crew? Well, besides that, that's a given. He's driving them worse than nuts. When you pick up stones to go stone somebody, you're a little bit ticked off. You're beyond the peed off thing. You're ready. You're, you got rage going. You need anger management now. Amen. What's he telling them? It's all about him. The religious leaders were what? All about, all about them. All about the temple. All about rituals. All about everything else except Jesus. And if they'd have been reading their book, 
which they all have been reading it, and they're all waiting for who? They're waiting for him. Hello? They're waiting for the Messiah. They're waiting for Jesus, and he's standing right in front of them telling them, I am. And they're picking up rocks are going to rock him. So now, bring this into today. Do you remember before you got saved and people would talk to you about Jesus? We were kind of like the Pharisees, weren't we? I don't know if you wanted to rock somebody. I know some people have cussed people out. I've told you a hundred times I had Leo jacked up against the wall. What is it about the name of Jesus that sets people off? Can I just give you a little idea here? People that aren't saved don't have what? Don't have the Holy Spirit in them, right? People that are saved have Holy Spirit in them. When you come into contact with somebody, guess what? You are not battling. The Bible says we don't battle against flesh and blood, but we battle against the powers and the principalities and the powers of the air, right? So what are you battling? You're battling the spirit that's within them. Everybody said, oh, wait a minute here. I did. It's a spiritual warfare. I think I've told you this story before, but I got backup on it here Years ago, probably 20, I've been doing this 25, so probably 30 years ago, this, all the churches in Great Falls were going to do a census. And they were going to go house to house, knock on the door, and find out if anybody went to church. And if they did go to church, you know, praise God, pass the pizza, and, you know, just do all this stuff. And so, I picked the whorehouse unbeknownst to her. <laughs> Went down there and I couldn't get in. Are you praying for me right now? <laughs> so I went to the bar and I said, hey, I need to get in next door. Oh, one of the boys were like, ah, I'll get you in there. So we got in there, walked up, knocked on the first door. One of the gals came to the door and all it was was asking few questions and then the last thing was can we pray for you and I don't know how many girls did you pray for five six I'm with him (laughs) (laughs) and I know we went one two three four I think we prayed for five or six people girls and then all of a sudden this one little dude he's about this high about this wide had a scar all the way across his face comes blowing out of the door. What the fuck are you doing in here? Said, hey, we're just praying for people and talking to people. Get the out of here. And so I just stuck my hand out and started walking towards him. True story, huh? He looks at me, puts his hands behind his back, and starts backing up down the hallway. <laughs> screaming and yelling at me the whole time. And I'm just going, I'm Pastor JT. I backed him all the way up to the corner. We were just, I don't know, I know she was right behind me. She was probably in my pocket, but. And we left. What was the battle? The battle wasn't him and I. It was the battle of the spirit that was in there. How did he know we were even there? The enemy's not stupid. Somehow, some way, he knew something was going on because he just come, unless one of the girls called him, he come blowing out of that door. Because I've got the I am within me. You guys have the same thing. And you've got the same power that Jesus Christ has in him because he tells you you do. Hello? So why are we afraid 
to proclaim the name of Jesus. Because you know what? You can go around and say God all day long. People agree with you about God all day long, but you say Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and things are either going to hit the fan, or they're going to go, oh, me too. Listen to this here. In the explanation of it, it says, Jesus was not just claiming to have lived before Abraham. He was claiming eternal existence. He was claiming to be God himself. Talking about Exodus 3.14. They knew Exodus 3.14. This time the Jewish leaders understood that Jesus was claiming to be God, so they took up stones to stone him for blasphemy. You got the God of the universe standing in front of you proclaiming that I am and that God sent me and you're going to stone him. Now don't get too judgmental in here. Because how many times have we when God's pulling us in when God's disciplining us because God disciplines those he oh come on God disciplines those he sometimes I think he loves me a little bit too much but when you have that in you you shouldn't be afraid to go anywhere if God's called you to go, now don't be stupid and just go, well, I'll just go barging in here and see what's going on. You've heard the, the story about the guy that the bike club was at a party and they were harassing this one young lady and a guy come up there and jumped in to help and he ends up standing in front of St. Peter and Peter says, so What's the last thing you were doing? He says, well, the last thing I think I was doing is I was helping some lady in front of a bunch of bikers. Did that just go over everybody's head? He jumped into somewhere he shouldn't have been. They killed him. He ended up in front of St. Peter. Okay, that felt like a rock. <laughs> huh? So those of you are going to get baptized, hook it, somebody run up and tell the kids and Marshall that we're going to Get things rocking and rolling here. Okay. So anyway, let's jump to something else here since that joke worked really well. <laughs> Go to John chapter 10. And we'll just hit a little bit of this. I'm going to start in verse 21, and I'm going to read a bunch here, okay? So here we go. John chapter 10, starting in verse 1. It says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the sheepfold, but climbs up from some other place on the stone wall, that one is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep, the protector and provider. The doorkeeper opens the gate for this man, and the sheep hear his voice and pay attention to it. And know that they listen. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out to pasture. When he has brought all his own sheep outside, he walks on ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice and recognize his call. Years ago, I was at a place, it's called Montana Christian Ashram. It's a week-long retreat down on the Boulder River outside of Big Timber. Beautiful place. Way back up in the hills, you got moose and elk and everything, bears running through the camp and everything's just amazing. And one morning I got up early and I, I took off, I just wanted to walk and pray and it, I mean the river's running there and it, Boulder River, I mean it's, it's roaring by there. And as I was coming back to camp, here comes a whole bunch of sheep coming at me. And probably from me to Polly, Everybody just slams on the brakes. <laughs> and they're all looking at me. A little bit, just a few seconds later, here comes a, the shepherd and his dog. And he says, hey, do me a favor. Go over there and sit on that rock and don't move. So 
So I walked over and sat down on the rock. And what are the sheep doing? They're watching my every move. And once I got sat down on the rock, he starts doing this little chirping, chirp. And guess what those sheep did? I'll turn around and look at him. Because the sheep knew his. And the dog started working and pretty soon they forgot all about that meathead JT sitting on that rock over here. And off down the road they went with him doing his and the dog working him. Why did the sheep take off and not worry about me? They were following the shepherd because they knew. How many of you know sheep are stupid? I'm talking about literal sheep. Sheep are they're dumb as rocks. Guess what God calls us? We are the sheep of his pasture. <laughs> so now listen though. If God starts doing the hey, oh, what should we do? Quit looking around at all the other stuff that's going on and put your focus on him and start following down the path that he wants to lead you down. Because he's going to what? Protect you. Now, although I wasn't a hazard to those sheep, they thought I was. Have you ever run into something that you think is a hazard to your life? And it takes your total focus off of Jesus, and you're looking at this dumb rock over here, and you go clean off the path. When the whole time God's going, hey! JT! That's when he needs those Holy Ghost hounds. To get a hold of your you know what? And get your attention to get you what? Back on the straight path again. God's amazing. And Jesus Christ says that he is the great I am. Who better to follow? And my question tonight is, Are you one of his sheep? Amen. Hello. Are you one of the sheep? I know we've been talking about an experience of God of hearing, listening to God and hearing God's voice. Don't raise your hands in here, but how many of you struggle knowing God's voice from your voice? Don't raise your hands. That's a huge struggle sometimes. But you know, if my wife calls me on the phone, how many of you know I'm going to know who it is? Right off the get, unless she's got a cold or something. In fact, no, I'd, I take that back because if her sister calls me, <clears throat> her and her sister sound exactly alike. And so if she's out of town and with her sister and call, I have to ask, is this known or Jan? <clears throat> But now if I get somebody else calls me that I have no clue who they are, am I going to know who it is? So how come I know her voice compared to their voice? It's a time thing. It's a relational thing. It's a talking thing. It's an intimate relationship. When you start getting an intimate relationship with God the Father, and you start hanging out in his word, <clears throat> excuse me, and you start praying, guess what you're going to start hearing? His, now, I'm not talking about the audible voice of God. I'm talking about you're going to know when you hear whatever you hear in your heart, in your head, coming off and leaping off scripture, you're going to know that it's God. How come? You spent time with the great I am listening for his voice. So if you don't know for positive sure that you're hearing God's voice, or if it's your voice, spend some more time with Jesus. Talk to Jesus. And can I give you a hint? Talk out loud. You say, well, people think I'm crazy. They already think you're crazy. Come on. 
If you claim to be a Christian, a lot of your friends already think you're crazy. So just start talking out loud. And who are you talking to? Me and Jesus hanging out. Oh, there you go, my God, here we go. <laughs> but when you start talking, guess what? When the other voice comes, you're going to know it ain't yours. Hello? Just try that. Just try walking down the street. Are we back there yet? They've been back there? All right. Just try walking down the street one day. Go for a little walk. In fact, I've been having fun with the dog walking down the street down here and praying and talking out loud and talking to people. And I haven't had anybody pull me up and call me crazy yet, but... Are we ready? Okay. I need... Zane needs to be first. All right, Brian, hit it. My name is Zane. I turned myself over to Jesus about seven months ago. Before I turned myself over, I was very angry at times, and I, was, I had a short fuse, and my friendships were not as strong as they could have been. Um, I turned myself over because my fiance Emily, invited me to come to Set Free, and I honestly, I loved it. My relationship with Jesus now is very loving, wholesome, and calming, and I couldn't be any happier. I renounce my past and accept and receive the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ over my life. I give Jesus Christ rule and reign over my life. Now let's all stay fired up for Jesus. I uh, <laughs> uh, love it. I love it. Right on. Well, Zane, it is our great privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> all right, Alyssa. Hang on, Jeffrey, hang on, buddy. Jeffrey's ready to dive in. All right, Brian. My name is Alyssa. I turned my life over to Jesus about 10 years ago. My name is Alyssa. I turned my life over to Jesus about 10 years ago. Before I came into faith with Jesus Christ, I was angry, depressed, and I drank a lot. I turned my life over to Jesus Christ by becoming closer, and which helped me to be to better believe and become less angry and depressed. I have been learning more about Jesus Christ and making some changes in different areas of my life. I renounce my past life and accept and receive the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ over my life. I give Jesus Christ rule and reign over my life. Woo! Come on, girl! So Alyssa, it is our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woo! Yeah! Come on, Emily. So we got three kids back here getting baptized too, and everybody's asking questions. All right, Bright. few months I have fully turned my life over to him. Before coming into faith with Jesus Christ, I was angry, depressed, and let everything get to me, and I was constantly worrying. I turned my life over to Jesus Christ after losing my mom and brother. I was hopeless, always sad, and mad. I knew I couldn't keep living that way. I needed peace and comfort, so I needed to change my life and have Jesus walk this life with me. What's happening now with my relationship with Jesus Christ is I have a totally different view. I'm happy, more loving, forgiving, and understanding. I have been set free, and I'm at peace, and I love this walk with Jesus. I renounce my past life and accept and receive the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ over my life. I give Jesus Christ rule and reign over my life. I don't. <laughs> So, Miss M, it is our great privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Woo! All 
All right, now you're going to get a kick out of this stuff here. All right, Jeffrey, let's get a thing you can stand on. Jeffrey, jump. Come on, Rhiannon, jump up here. All right, now, Ron, we might have to hook a little volume on this because we got JJ's asking the question and they're answering the question. So let's make sure we can hear because this is great. This is good stuff here. All right, go ahead. When did you turn your life over to Jesus? When I was only four years old. How was your life before you knew Jesus? When um, you told me about it. Okay, how's your life been since you've known Jesus? Um, really good since I know him. Okay. All right. Well, what's what's happening now with your relationship with Jesus? Uh, it's getting together. All right, perfect, that's good right there. Amen, Woo! you're the man. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Okay, so they're gonna, he's gonna pull you off and just dunk you in here, okay? Ready? All right, Jeffrey, it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Here we go. Good job, woo! <laughs> Good job, dude. All right, Miss Rainey. Yeah, you're probably going to need that one, too. Now, this girlfriend, the testimony's got it going on. Here we go. What's your name? Rainey Jean Till. When did you turn your life over to Jesus? When I was four. <clears throat> How was your life like before you knew Jesus? Um, good. Good, okay. Well, how's it been since you've known Jesus? Really, really good. Why did you turn your life over to Jesus? So he could be my Savior. Alright. Well, here, we'll read that. I renounce my past life and accept and receive the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ over my life. I give Jesus Christ rule and um, reign over my life. Yeah. Lorraine, it is our great privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Good job, girlfriend. All right, Tripp, come on, here we go. All right, let her fly. What's your name? Tripp. When did you turn your life over to Jesus? When I was three. How was your life before you knew Jesus? Uh, good. Why did you turn your life over to Jesus? Because when my brother told me about it, he told me a good story. So I started believing in Jesus. What's happening now that you're with your relationship with Jesus? It's going a lot more better. <laughs> you want to read that? Hi, bro. Right on. Good job, buddy. Here, jump up here. Get up. Get up here close, up. We can get some good pictures. So, Trip, it is our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Amen. God's amazing, isn't he? So how's your life now? Really, really good. <laughs> Isn't it cool to listen to a kid's testimony? And I love how Rain, she just wanted, I want to read that. She wanted to read the end part and just get it going and rocking and rolling in her life. So with that, we're going to be back in I Am again. 
next week. We might run this for two or three. I'm not sure how far this is going to go. Because, do you know, I, I haven't looked all the way through it yet, but there's a lot of IMs in here in the New Testament. A lot of IMs in the Old Testament too, but we're going to mainly focus on Jesus and who he is to you. So as we close tonight, just bow your heads with me. And if you don't know for a positive fact that you're one of his sheep and you've never truly asked Jesus Christ to be the Lord and Savior of your life, tonight would be a great time. Just listening to these kids and the, and the three adults that got baptized tonight, um, Jesus Christ will radically change your life. And if that's you tonight and you say, you know what, I need Jesus, would you just really quick put your hand up, put her down? Anybody? All right. I'm going to pray that we're all good with Jesus tonight then. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you and praise you. Thank you for these six that came and, and made a profession of faith in front of everybody. That they love Jesus Christ and they want to follow him as best as they know how. Lord, bless this crew. Watch over and protect them as we go about our week. And let us not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ as we walk these streets. I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Love you. We'll see you later.